Hi everyone, it's Jack Bauer with another video. Today I'm going to be talking about Bank of America stock. It's just released its most recent earnings report. Stock bounced on the news, though it's down a little bit today. Stock is trading at some of the lowest valuations to trade at in the last five, six, seven years. Trading at an incredibly low price of bulk value. Compares really favourably when compared against other big banks of its ilk. It's currently trading at nearly a 3.5% dividend yield. P ratio of under 8 on a trailing basis. And just off its 52 week lows. I'm very interested in this business. I'm going to talk you through the valuation, its most recent results, how it returns capital to shareholders, and then whether I think it's a buy, sell, or hold going forward. First, valuation, and perhaps the most compelling case for this business is tr trading far below its five year average valuations and currently trading at less than book value at just 0.84 times. So that's compared to a five year average of 1.13. And when you compare that to its competitors, you can see that this is a significant discount. JP Morgan Chase, which is in fairness the premium bank in this space, in my opinion, trades for more like 1.5 times book value and 10 times earnings compared to almost half that 0.84 and around eight times tra um, trailing earnings. Wells Fargo, which has been an absolute dumpster fire over the medium term, but it's starting to turn it around and looks a better business. It's currently trading at 0.95 times book value, so still a, a discount to book value but even more expensive in relative terms to Bank of America. That just doesn't make much sense to me. Price forward earnings of 8. Potential earnings yield around 13% right now looks staggering cheap to me. For me, this business is priced with a massive margin of safety if it does anything but decrease revenue, basically. And revenue is up 3% year over year. A modest, a modest increase, nothing special, but it's better than the price expects. That's 25.2 billion for the quarter. Net income 10% year over year, really quite impressive. 7.8 billion dollars, of course. Interest rate increases have not uniformly affected all banks. Citigroup's earnings were not as impressive. JP Morgan's were very impressive. Bank of America's somewhere in between. EPS of 90 cents a share, it's up 11% year over year, so the PE ratio is going to contract even more going forward. They continue to have a really strong balance sheet. Their common equity tier one, it's 11.9%. Think this is capital versus assets. It's what banks re required to have above the regulatory, regulatory minimum. It's 240 basis points above this. No concern there. They're increasing the quarterly dividend of further 9%. It's already a juicy 3.5% nearly. Deposits of $1.9 trillion. That increased modestly quarter over quarter. But crucially, no real downtrend as, as was expected a couple of quarters ago with the semi-banking crisis or the deposits crisis. It's just not really materialised for this business. Return on common equity, 11.2%. But value continues to increase. A return on assets, of, or average assets, just shy of 1%, which is reasonably impressive considering the enormous amount of assets they have. Overall, I'm very pleased with this on a surface level, so let's just dive a little bit deeper into some of these. Provisions for credit losses are getting a a lot more attention for banks as the consumer is presented to weaken going forward. So I wanted to look a bit more in depth on those statistics in the box, which is basically provisions for credit losses, which increased 10% quarter over quarter for the bank and significantly year over year by, well, they've basically gone up by a third year over year. And that's net charge offs are essentially the money they put aside for credit card bills, not missing, mortgage payments missing, etc., etc., And reserve release or build is money they're putting away or releasing from the reserves to go towards credit losses essentially and they've decided to build the reserves this time as basically is forced upon them by the regulatory requirements but other than this it's a relatively small amount they're already very close to the, the next threshold they're significantly above the current threshold i have no real problems with the amount of money they're going to be having to put towards this I don't think it's going to affect earnings in a material way going forward that is going to make this business suddenly look overvalued because there's significant margin of safety built into the valuation in my opinion. Just a brief look at some balance sheet metrics. I have complete confidence in Bank of America's balance sheet to be honest. And this bank is this bank and kind of well at least JP Morgan Chase as well of the big four banks are kind of too big to fail. It has assets that continue to grow and in Q3 2023 assets now stand at 3.15 trillion dollars bulk value per common share just it continues to increase and is massively outstripping the growth of this business it was up nine percent or the growth of the shares it was up nine percent from the previous year a tangible bulk value per share up 12 percent from the previous year for a bulk value per common share of 32.65 well above where it is now finally i want to look at deposit trends so this was a big concern 
earlier on in the year when Silicon Valley Bank and First Republic were going under and Credit Suisse as well. Not really so much of a concern right now. While there has been a general trend downwards from, you can see from, for example, Q3 2022 compared to now with just a year, most of the deposits have gone steadily down. But this is generally as savings rates have decreased because prices have gone up, in my opinion. If you look at it compared to Q4 2019, there has been absolutely staggering growth across pretty much every segment in total corporation. There's been a massive growth in consumer banking. It's gone up by over $250 billion. Overall, I'm really happy with where this deposit trend is going, even it has been a bit lumpy this year. So I've talked about how I think this business has a relatively high margin of safety, trading at a reasonably cheap valuation. And now I want to talk about if the share price does nothing, what is happening to cap being capital being returned to shareholders. And they do that in the form of dividend and in the form of share buybacks. At the minute, the dividend yield is around 3.5%. Is continually increased basically since the financial crisis as long as they have been allowed to increase the dividend they have done at a great rate you can see the stock price has gone from ten dollars in 2014 but that was really recovery from the financial crisis to where it is now in the 20s peaking at just over 40 a couple of years ago the dividend payout has gone steadily in one direction no matter what the stock price has done the dividend has gone steadily in one direction barring the global financial crisis to now a yield around three and a half percent and a payout of a decent payout even though the stock price is struggling. Not only do I have a lot of faith in a well covered dividend that's paying out a decent amount more than the S&P 500 average, but this business is also buying back shares at an absolutely ferocious rate, basically whenever it can. So this is not always possible for banks because of the capital requirements, but you can see shares outstanding in 2014, there's now 11.5 billion shares outstanding at the end of 2013, going into 2014. Now there's just about or just shy of 8 billion shares outstanding. So that's a significant reduction around a third. They're going to continue to do so. They've been buying back shares without any real year, years of increasing the share count since 2016. You can see some some quarters they're reducing the share count by a pretty large amount. I can think this is going to continue going forward. And they do have a very strong track record and look to continue a strong track record of paying back capital shareholders. Overall, I'm happy with how this business is handling the state of the economy right now. I think it returns excellent capital shareholders. I'm very confident in the, ma the management team. I think Brian Moynihan is one of the stronger, strongest CEOs in the business space in general, particularly in the banking sector, only really being outshone by Jamie Dimon, in my opinion. Really like its capital returns to shareholders, like its prospect going forward, and particularly like its valuation. For me, this is a buy right now. I'm going to be adding some shares in the next com coming few days. Not going to build a massive position, but I can see this becoming a reasonably sized position. Maybe it was 5% of my portfolio. It's good enough for Warren Buffett. It's good enough for me. With that being said, this is just my opinion. You should let me know your opinion in the comments down below. I'm of course not a financial advisor. So you shouldn't take this as, or any of this as personalized financial advice. You should do your own research and due diligence. And remember, your capital is always at risk when investing in stocks and shares. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Like and subscribe and join the video. I'll see you again next time.